All right, hey everybody, get things pinned for you so they're easy to find. One sec. All right, let's see how we do. All right, let me put this here so I can see your comments. Okay. What's up? Feel free to uh, just say hello in the chat box, smash some likes and hearts. Let me know you guys can hear me okay. And uh, you may notice I'm flying solo today. <clears throat> Elon is uh, actually came down with a fever last night, so he's just getting some rest. So you get me solo today. Again, if you're just coming in, smash some likes, smash some hearts, say hello in the chat box. Let me know that my uh, audio and video is coming in clear for you. And then, uh, interesting topic today. Hey, I'm good. Thank you. I'm very good. Thank you, guys. Hey, Ramona. Hey, Carmen. Hey, Claire. Jana, what's up? So as, uh, as people are popping in here, I'll just do a quick uh, intro, especially if you are uh, new to our community. We're, we're growing by leaps and bounds on a weekly basis. Um, so if you're meeting me for the first time, my name is Guy Ferdman. Uh, usually on these calls, you'll have uh, both myself uh, and Elon. Let me actually put the chat box up there so you guys can see all the stuff coming through. Uh, usually you'll have myself and my, uh, my brother on here. Elon is uh, a little under the weather and dealing with a fever. So he is uh, choosing to rest up quite uh, smartly. Um, if you're here and this community is all about uh, your development, uh, personal development, mindset, uh, mindset development, and uh, very importantly, and kind of the near and dear work to mind and Elon's hearts these days is, is more of the practices and the energy in awareness space. Uh, we'll talk a lot about why those are really, really critically important. And for those of you guys who've been around the mindset development space for a long time, um, you know, I'll talk about some of the limitations of that and why if you actually include what you're doing already or bolting on to the mindset space and you add uh, energy and awareness to any sort of therapeutic or uh, habituation type of practices, uh, you're going to see an astronomical, an exponential growth curve in terms of your own development and healing. Um, and so we are very interested not just in people learning how to manage and cope and rehabituate, although all those are very, very important. We're actually extraordinarily interested in what we teach uh, dynamically here is how do you get to the stuff that's underneath the mindset stuff that we can uh, retrain and really get under um, the the energetics, uh, the sensational, the subtle stuff that's happening inside the system that is then lending itself to your mind having a certain type of response. And so we'll talk a lot about that today. So if you're here, uh, hopefully you're here to uh, better yourself, whether that's in your relationships in your relationship to yourself or others, uh, whether that's in your business or entrepreneurial journey, if you're a coach or consultant or anything like that, or if you're just a curious growth seeker in all those cases, you are uh, in the perfect place. What's up, Danny? Good to have you. Um, so uh, one more thing before I get going on today's topic, if you are new to the community and you want to immediately uh, kind of cut your teeth, so to speak. I hate that terminology. I don't know why I used it, but you want to cut your teeth on the training that we do here. And you actually want to start practicing the things I just mentioned around energetics, awareness, and how to couple that with mindset so that you're not just, again, managing and coping, but actually healing. Um, the primary tool we have for you in this community is what we call our active healing meditation. 
And if you want that, then you just want to type in meditation in the comment box below right now. And then we have people from our team like Tobias, Sarah, Corey, Jasmine, Nikki, uh, all these people are in this group uh, on a regular basis here to support this community uh, with your growth journey. Should you have any questions, um, you want some guidance, you want to know about the type of programs that we do here at the more advanced levels, if you decide to do that with us, um, those are the people that you want to be um, setting up conversations with or, or asking. But if you want that uh, meditation now, again, like these people are starting to type in there like Ramona. Um, and Lisa, um, just type in meditation yourself and then they will find those comments and they will uh, get those resources over to you. Uh, we highly, highly, highly recommend if you're going to take that on uh, here intermittently, we do um, meditation challenges here in the community, but you really don't need us to prompt you to do a challenge, although it's always fun to do things in a community structure. Uh, we do recommend that you take on a habit. You know, they say 21 days to create a habit and do this meditation for, for a number of reasons. Number one, it's going to give you a, a fundamental understanding of what it is that we do here, not from an understanding point of view, but from an experiential point of view, because it's all well and good if you understand concepts. That's great. It's just not going to help you ultimately. What changes lives, what transforms people's lives is a direct experience that they have. So you want to grapple with these things. And so even if you've done meditation in the past and you're like, this is not for me, I don't know how to quiet my mind, don't worry about that. This is not that kind of meditation. In fact, in, in my opinion, having meditated for about a decade now and gone through really intense experiences with it, uh, meditation is not about quieting the mind at all. That's a nice byproduct that you sometimes get for meditation, but it certainly should not be the goal. We want to learn how to sit with our active mind. We want to learn how to work with the parts inside of our system. And this is actually what enables and unleashes your ability to heal and build this kind of confidence within yourself that you can deal with any situation that life throws at you, okay? A lot of people uh, do coaching, do personal development because they want to change their circumstances. I totally get that. It's kind of like hard to dismiss this aspect of us, ourselves that wants our circumstances to get better. However, you know, there is the confidence of like the confidence that most of us portray in the world. And then there's like confidence and knowing that you could be with any circumstance in your life, not because you like the circumstance, but because you become so confident with your own ability to feel through what circumstances ultimately stimulate our bodies with. So what does that mean? That means that a lot of us deal with circumstances and what we really don't like is, yeah, the circumstance sucks maybe, but what we don't like is the feeling in our body. We don't like this, this resonance and discomfort and there's a part of us that's at war with that discomfort. And so the retraining really and what healing is, is that when that, if you can be with awareness and that sensation arises in your body and you no longer are, are in a fight with it, you just surrender to it. This energy can move in and out of your body in a fluid nature and doesn't get caught. We'll talk a lot about that today, what that means for healing and, and how do we uh, enable this kind of human superpower that we all have. And so that is true confidence when you're no longer scared of sensations in your body, truly. And if you really think about what most of us spend our money and time on and all these different things, uh, ultimately when we're trying to acquire is not a circumstance, it's actually an inner experience. You know, whether you go buy something physical in this world and you get that dopamine hit or you go get an experience, what you really care about is your inner experience. And so we want to get really related to the fact that our conditioning uh, at the whole of society, for the most part, is very externally focused. We're constantly looking how to change our external circumstances. Most training you'll get from most coaches is how to perform better to change your circumstances. This like very visceral masculine approach to like controlling and changing and altering your reality and bending it to your will and all this kind of crazy shit, which uh, is cool. And I've done that for many years. And I could tell you that's all an illusion. Like no one can control the reality. No one knows what today is going to bring or tomorrow is going to bring. So ultimately the real peace, the real healing comes from being able to actually turn within and learn how to actually work your system. Like this intelligence that lives within us is the most critical thing that anything that anybody, in my opinion, can learn. And I, I've been saying this a lot recently, but I want to reiterate it here, which is most of us spent, you know, probably 12 to 16 years 
of education in school. It would have been very beneficial if we would have spent the first part of that education learning how to actually educate ourselves, meaning like how do you actually study, like learn how to study, you know, learn how to do those kind of things. And secondly, here we are in this meat suit machine. Inside of here, I don't think we can argue that there's some kind of awareness and consciousness that we are uh, demonstrating energy and motion on a regular basis. Our world, you know, even from a scientific quantum physics point of view, from a spiritual point of view, is, is just energy and vibration and frequency and motion. And yet, not a minute, not a second, not a moment of time in school and our upbringing and our, is spent on learning about how to actually work or understand that machinery. And that to me is insane. And, and one of the missions of this company is to, to alter that, is to give this education to people to understand that there's really nothing wrong with you. It's just that there's a certain conditioning that's been applied on the human mind, on the human spirit right now, and that's driven uh, our society in a certain direction. We have a very much a, a world built by the mind today with lacking a lot of heart. I think most people would agree on this point. If you don't, that's fine. Um, and it's not just about bringing in heart it's about really like coming back into ourselves and into our eternal experience and understanding how to work with that so that the the divine intelligence that works within us and through us can present itself in a new way in your life and again that can mean uh, godliness to you that can mean connecting with the universe that can mean just connecting with with all of it but to us it's just it's connecting back with your own intelligence connecting back with awareness itself and so today Going into today's topic, uh, I wrote a question, are you growing up or are you waking up? And so I want to create a distinction for you guys, if you will allow me, um, so we understand the approach that most of the personal development space is taking, and then a distinct switch that we get to make that Elon and I have made over the last six, seven years or so, in terms of the type of teachings that uh, have been brought to our space, type of teachings that we now do with our personal clients, in our events, in our long-term programs, in order to facilitate this, this new transformation, this new evolution that's coming to humanity, which is really stopping to be an externally focused society and recognizing that the external view that we're having, right? This reality, this organic hologram that we're all experiencing is nothing more than a mirroring effect of the vibration inside of your body. And so if we're going to do transformative work, it's not about changing our story, although that, that, that helps to a degree because there's some therapeutic reasons to do that. But ultimately, it's like what is vibrating this frequency that's inside of you is going to get mirrored into your reality. And so the thing you want to hopefully get curious about as you listen to me speak today is, well, how do I change that frequency? You know, how do I ground that frequency? How do I, how does that frequency, instead of emanating fear and worry and scarcity and lack, it starts emanating connection and abundance and well-being. And if I'm emanating those qualities into the greater field, into this organic hologram, then the question I have for you is, do you believe that by emanating that frequency, and you could say yes in the chat box or no in the chat box if you agree or disagree, if I'm emanating those frequencies, will my reality begin to match those frequencies as easily as they match the frequencies of scarcity or fear or terror or a lot of the stuff that uh, everybody that I've ever worked with is, is emanating because that's just how we have been brought to be conditioned in this world, okay? So... I want to um, I want to just pop in here and give you some distinctions right around what it is I'm talking about. So if we are talking about um, growing up work, OK, this is where most people are pretty well versed if they've done any sort of mindset development. Um, I, by the way, I'm, I'm coining these terms from uh, Ken Wilber. If you've never read Ken Wilber's work, it's, it's thick to say the least. Um, he's got a great book excuse me, called Religions of Tomorrow. It's uh, Even if you get on audiobook, it's a 30-hour uh, listen. So it's it's dense, it's thick. And, and honestly, if you get 5% of understanding of what he's talking about, you know, you're, you're doing pretty good. Um, it's some pretty high-level stuff in there. And so he makes this distinction between growing up work and waking up work. Uh, we can also call this like the, the vertical plane or the horizontal plane, right? So the mental plane is more of this like horizontal, linear thinking, uh, progressive thinking. It's like, you know, there's sequences. Here's how we get 
from step eight, uh, from step one to step two, and so on and so forth. And then there's like the vertical, which is like more of the the spiritual, right? The awareness, the energy, the awakening of consciousness itself. And so these are helpful to think about in in two distinct paths of transformation and human liberation. Okay, because ultimately, like transformation to me, very cool to transform some state of being into another state of being. That's alchemy, right? Human alchemy. That's beautiful. However, transformation is great, but just because you transform something doesn't mean you're not going to struggle with that transformation. There's still maybe struggle in your life. Transformation does not obfuscate you from having difficult circumstances. That That's life. Life is you know, a bit of a roller coaster of ups and downs. Even if you are the most enlightened human being, um, you know, my teacher, for example, is is probably one, I don't want to call anyone enlightened because I've never met an enlightened being, but he's one of the most enlightened people I've ever met in my life. And over the last two years, he's had some of the most uh, difficult physical challenges in his life. Now he faces them with a lot of grace that most people would probably be, you know, depressed in that situation. Nonetheless, challenges abound, challenges arise. Uh, people who are spiritual, that doesn't mean that they're never going to get upset again. It never means that they're never going to do something out of integrity again. Like these are, are very um, young ideas, you know, and, and a lot of us, when we get into the developmental space, we think, oh, here's a teacher. They have to, they have to have like, a, you know, they need to be pure. They can't curse. They can't, they have to have ultimate integrity. They can't ever do anything wrong. And, and we'll project a lot of stuff on a person like that. Same way that a child, and that's why I call it young, same way that a child projects that on a parent because they see this all knowing kind of being who's supposed to be perfect. And of course the child ends up in disappointment as they learn that the parent is not all knowing and perfect in every single way. And there's like a natural disappointment that arises there. And here's the truth. None of us are perfect. We're all going through our shit and life is throwing stuff at us that sometimes we're prepared for. And oftentimes that we're not. And so again, coming back to this idea of growing up work, growing up work again is more in the, uh, let me just get rid of this um, ticker on the bottom. Cool. So, you know, growing up work, again, is what most of you guys are probably well versed in. It's mindset development. It's uh, the ability to take personal responsibility. Responsibility, by the way, distinct from fault and blame, meaning you're not shaming or blaming yourself. You understand that responsibility is not a, a matter of learning, uh, figuring out who's to blame or finger pointing. It's just a matter of a perception that that which is I am experiencing my life is being sourced through me. Okay. And so like you kind of take this uh, perspective that everything that happens is just being sourced uh, from my field, from my perspective, and that can oh, that's malleable and changeable as long as I'm seeing myself as the source of everything, right? And so from, from seeing myself as a source, I'm always in a position of power. People who are stuck or often play with more victim mentality, I certainly did that uh, all through my teen years. I was dealing with depression, and suicide, I, I, I know that mentality extremely well. It's, it's, a, it's an avoidance defensive tactic. And the worst part of it is you're putting yourself in a situation where you feel powerless to change anything in your life, right? Because it's like, oh, this, this isn't me. It's uh, something is happening to me. I would never allow something like this happen to me. But you'll often see this pattern with people who are stuck in that kind of mindset. Again, nothing wrong with it, just a type of defense a type of way of dealing and surviving with this world is that that well it's not me it's them it's that over there it's that circumstance it's just happening to me if if that wasn't happening everything would be well and good but if we always want to come back to if there's if a person is dealing in their life with a lot of reenactment they're seeing the same or similar type of circumstances they're seeing the same or similar type of relationships they're seeing the same or similar type of uh, situations around money it's useful, very, very, very useful um, to, sorry, I was reading a comment and I was answering it in my mind. It's very um, useful then to say, you know what, I'm at the source of what's happening. And then I feel like I can enact some change. I can perceive things differently. I can go clean this thing up in my life. I can rehabituate how I'm approaching things. I can view you know, such and such in different ways. And there's all sorts of different um, mechanical tools that you can do to the mind to bring it to a different state of awareness. Okay. 
So, and that takes some rehabituation, right? Of course. The other aspects is, so we have responsibility. There's things like integrity, like living your life from a really high level of integrity. Uh, this means like honoring uh, what you say at a very high level. So if a word, like if you give your word to something that you honor that word, all these different kind of things. So a lot of you guys know these kind of things. You know how to change your story. You know how to change your paradigm. And if you're like, I don't know how to do those things. That's totally fine, by the way, right? Like we're, we're all at different levels of, of learning, not better or worse. There are things in your life that you are super talented in that I know nothing about and vice versa. Uh, I've, I've invested 20 years and, and, you know, between Elon and myself, well over a million dollars in education because of, for whatever reason, my consciousness is extremely curious about this stuff. I can never get enough of it. And so it's easy for me. Um, and so what we do here as an organization is we we try to take the best of everything we've learned over two decades from a variety of teachings, teachers, wisdoms, mystery schools, energy schools, um, psych psychologies and therapies, uh, neuroscience. And we take all this and we're like, what's the most useful things that have brought significant changes in our lives? And that's what we that's what we share here. That's ultimately what Satori Prime is. So that that stuff is the growing up work. Okay. And if you guys have any questions on that or, you know, please let me know. And if you're tracking that, um, you know, why don't you on the mindset level, like rate yourself, you know, on a scale of one to 10, like how well versed in, in mindset are you? And the way that you know that you're well versed is when you're dealing with a difficult situation in your life, you know how to navigate that in a way that brings you back to an empowered resourced place. And you know how to shift your experience so that you have a much more positive outcome all right so like rate yourself on a scale of one to ten and again if you're at a zero or a one like there's there's no shame in that we all start somewhere like i said in my teenage years I, i'm very lucky i i don't know lucky or led to i got led to transformative work at 19 years old but seven years before that it was hell on earth for me you know just constantly thinking about uh, ending my life, suicide, how shitty the world is, nothing is fair, you know, like this really kind of dark mentality. And I had to, as many have had to dig their way out of that. And today I, I can talk about that like a, you know, like a dream that I woke up for, uh, woke up from a long time ago. And, you know, it took me a lot. I spent 15 years around that kind of developmental work to really understand, like, how does somebody change these things? How do we uh, communicate from a place that really affects two people and can transform a relationship? How does somebody uh, overcome very ingrained fears in their system? Like all these different things are, are absolutely real, can definitely be worked with. And again, if you know nothing about that space, uh, we do have uh, programs for people who want to be in more of the mindset developmental space. And then we have a, a whole ascension model that takes you up into awareness and energy and some of these much more fun, cooler things as well. But, you know, in the beginning, if you've never learned these things, if you don't know that the little voice in your head is just a mechanism that the mind uses, it's not actually who you are, excuse me, it's not actually who you are. You are actually the one listening to the little voice in your head like that that alone that that one single idea there hopefully you caught it i kind of gave it pretty fast um is life transforming the moment you create some separation between you and what people call their mind or their thoughts that they're having and again i'll say this a little slower recognize that those are not your thoughts you are actually the the observer or the listener that can listen to the thoughts and so right there, we call that a subtle mind awareness. You become aware in a subtle way that you are the watcher. You are the listener of the, of the inner mind. And we can do the same thing with, when it comes to energetics and awareness within the body as well. Okay. And that's where we kind of go more into the waking up work. So hopefully if you're tracking what I'm talking about, the mindset, growing up work, uh, say I in the chat box. And I want you to know that like this is a, it's actually very profound that growing up work is here because it's it's relatively new uh, to our society. Um, there have been a lot of awakening and awareness practices for thousands of years, and that's why we always say that you know, Satori Prime is a is a blend of of modern neuroscience and psychology and therapies blended with very ancient practices. Because waking up practices are very ancient, very old. They've been around forever, but people have been. It's it's most of us have not been able to find practical application for them. 
Uh, we think again, you have to like sit in the cave for 30 years and like give up all your possessions and like that there may have been a time in humanity that's true, but we are now in a different kind of energy where it's like those teachings have come down from the mountains and from those places. And I could tell you from teaching this to thousands of people that there's absolutely extraordinarily practical applications. And the real secret sauce here is when you can combine these two practices together. When you're doing growing up work and you have that foundation and you start including it with awareness and energy practices, I mean, it's sky's the limit for you, really. Um, so one of the things that we have found with the growing up work is like even people who are really, really, really well developed with their mindset, there is a growing frustration that some people haven't recognized in their system yet. So they keep pushing, trying to get into more mindset work. Okay. And what I mean by that is it's like, okay, well, I still haven't healed from that thing. Well, I guess there's another process out there that I haven't done. I got to do Hoffman process. I got to do IFS. I got to do this. I got to do that. And I'm like, Ooh, man, I have been in that trap. And what we have found is here's what ends up happening. You just get a lot more information. And if you, if you like to read personal development books, you, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but after a while, in the beginning, it's amazing to read them. But after a while, they all kind of sound the same. Say I if you if you know what I'm talking about. It's like they, they might use like different vernacular. They might even have a different distinction. But as they define what that distinction is, you're like, oh, yeah, no, that sounds just like that thing. Or that just sounds like that thing. And so we have this rehashing of information. People just coming up with new names for it. But it's really just the same old shit. Because, again, the principles of mindset development is like there's a mind there's a mechanism to it here's how you can understand it yeah we're evolving our understanding slowly a little bit at a time but the fundamentals stay the same your store your your mind is a story generating machine ultimately where a transformation happens is your ability to understand the original story the hows and the whys and the what's of why that occurred and then realize well you know i just kind of made a, that up that that story around it even if it felt very real and I have the ability from a place of responsibility to change that story. And so you can, you can rehabituate the mind to a new story. And so a whole new pathway of life opens up for you and new possibilities and opportunities and forms of communication open up for you. However, if you're honest and you check in and I would say any, like any and all clients that we've had over the years have said this to be true is that there is a growing frustration where it's like, well, how come I have all this wisdom? How come I have all this information? How come I've seen transformation in my life, but underneath, I still feel the same. And so and this is the chase. This is why we keep trying to get the books, keep going to new classes, keep trying to do the next thing because it's like, well, this didn't do it. That over there hopefully will heal me. And it, and it really, if you, if you track this, it comes from an energy of desperation. It comes from an energy of like a hopelessness, like, a, you know, fuck. I, I gotta, I gotta get out of this fucking rut and it, and it doesn't change. And so Elon, and I did that for 15 years. Okay. So I'm, I'm as guilty of that as anybody just keep on going, keep thinking it's the next thing. Oh, it's gotta be that teacher. It's gotta be this coach. It's gotta be that. And so this is why we, we now make this big distinction for people. Cause we want you to understand is like with mindset work, it's like this, you have this incredible growth curve that goes up, 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 up. Yeah. You know, some of you guys are saying you feel the same, uh, uh, Dina, uh, hopefully I'm saying your name, right? So she feels the same. You guys tell me if you feel the same too. And so you feel this like upward trajectory that's really exciting. And then after a while it plateaus and then it's like the frustration sets in and it's like meh. It's like this fucking meh. And it, again, you have, I'm not putting this down at all. You have transformed your life. You're probably more productive than you've ever been. Your relationships are probably better than you've they've ever been. Your health is probably in order, or at least, you know, for most of us. And then but there's an undercurrent of sameness. It's like, nope, nothing's really changed. And so what you've actually learned to do, if I can name it, is you are now managing your life better and you're coping better with these frustrations, this anger, the scarcity, loneliness, whatever it is that comes up. You're, you're, you're managing and coping better, but you haven't healed. And that's the point here is that it hasn't healed. You've just learned a lot of good mechanisms to deal with it. And so that's why we have like anger management, coping systems. Nobody says we will get rid of it. You know, nobody's like no more anger, no more coping. It's like 
that's that's the thing you're going to learn systems and it's cool right and i do want to give some props here to it it's cool because what you'll find is that you you fall off the horse so to speak for much shorter periods of time right it's like yeah you get upset but you can like catch it quicker bring yourself back into that like awareness and then kind of like okay like we got to bring ourselves back over here but notice too in that that there's like a an efforting that oh i fell off i got an effort to get myself back and again, this this effort has an inherent frustration in it. Hopefully, I'm naming the qualities of this for you guys in a way that that um, makes sense to. And if it does, again, say I in the chat box. So I know you're kind of following the conversation. So let's just breathe with that because it's okay to be frustrated and it's okay that that's happening. Like we are trying our best as humanity to figure this shit out. So just kind of like shake out your body, take a deep breath. <sighs> And just whatever you need to do in this moment to just kind of, first of all, honor the work that you've put in. Like just like feel an honoring of the work that you've put in, even if it hasn't always bore you a lot of fruit, like you are trying, you're doing, you're putting in some kind of effort to live a life that's more harmonious, loving, compassionate. And I and I praise and honor you for, for that because many people just kind of live a life of sta sameness. They're stubborn. They're too afraid. And the stubbornness comes from fear. They're too afraid to change. They may not like their reality, but it's the one that they know. You know, it's that line. It's like the devil you know is better than blah, blah, blah. I don't remember the rest of the line. But it's like, it's like you people rather stay in their rut in the lane that they know, even if they don't like that lane, because at least that it's a, like it, it won't disappoint them. They know what to expect in that rut. Okay. So let's make this turn here into defining a little bit more clearly what what waking up work is because it's very distinct from growing up work okay and by the way i want to let you guys know for those of you guys who uh, are connecting with the language that i'm using here to describe growing up work and you are at that stage you are a perfect candidate to be doing work with us okay like Ultimately, we can we can support anybody in the mindset space and all that kind of stuff. But if you've done a lot of that and you're at that point of frustration, what I'm about to say here, I don't want to make it sound cocky about it, but like it's what you've been looking for. OK, and, and I'm telling you that from a place of I'm around a lot of people who have done developmental work again for 20 straight years. I've, this is how we've noted this frustration within ourselves and others and anybody who I've introduced into this waking up aspect of the work immediately is like, holy shit. I had no idea, and this is this is the work that I've been looking for. So if you are that person, you're enjoying this conversation already, you know you want to talk to someone from our team, all you got to do is um, you can either type contact me in the chat box below, or you can go to, let me just grab this thing for you, I'll pop it on the screen real quick. You can go to uh, callsatori.com, okay? Callsatori.com, that will forward you to uh, one of our team members, uh, calendars. Uh, you can have a 15 minute uh, discovery or consultation call with them. We don't sell you anything on the first call uh, because we want you to show up without any pressure to feel like you need to buy anything. Uh, ultimately, we want you to have a conversation about this work, see if it's an alignment for you. And then from there, if it is, we can have another conversation about what programs cost, um, experiences, time, all that stuff looks like. But ultimately, in the beginning, you want to just feel into, is this the work that I want to be part of? Yes or no, that's what the first call is for, okay? So, uh, again, if you want to get a consultation, um, you either just type in contact me, someone will reach out to you. But I, I actually recommend just going to callsatori.com and uh, booking yourself in. It's We'll just save you a step or two, okay? So let's make this turn into waking up work, okay? So what is waking up work, okay? Waking up work uh, is bringing in awareness practices and energy practices, I don't think, hopefully, at this stage of the game, in our understanding of, of matter and science and quantum physics, that we can at least hopefully agree on that everything in this world is made out of energy, okay? And this energy is vibrating and has a frequency that's emitting from it, okay? And if you notice, the external experiences that you are having seem to be stimulating some kind of inner experience, okay? To define this further, what that means is that oftentimes you're around people or some situation in your life, 
it scares you or you feel like, you know, usually when you get scared or when you're under stress, you begin to defend yourself from like an egoic type of place. You got to kind of be honest with yourself about this, right? And so we all have these defense systems and that's really what the mind is, is a series of, 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 of uh, traumas that have happened to you and the mind has had to create defensive systems to protect this kind of soft, gentle being that lives underneath. And so even the most, you know, <laughs> sociopathic, non-feeling of us out there, uh, you could say that that person is generally speaking one of the most traumatized people and they've had to armor up so much that they're literally, they can't feel anything in their body anymore. Okay. And so it's not a matter of anybody's evil or good or bad, although certainly on the, at the top level, it, we can, you know, certainly put those observations uh, and distinctions on people. Ultimately, we are dealing with a world where everybody is born into this world as a sensitive child, right? Because uh, the way I can prove that everyone's sensitive when they're a child is that a baby is not born with language. It's not born with any uh, knowledge of this world. And so the only transmission, the only language that a baby and a caregiver has is these energetic signalings, right? Like the baby is picking up on energetic signaling. Now, at that stage of the game, when the child is first in their early development, and early development is really one to three, but really all the way up to seven, eight years old, when the mind is being developed and rationality begins and uh, progressive thinking begins and linear thinking begins, like, you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but the brain has no logic basically built into it until about seven or eight years old. A child literally can't see the world from another's perspective. They only see it from their own. And so at this point of the game, the number one thing that a caregiver's quote unquote job is to do is to help the child feel safe, okay? The way that we do that, and again, this is uh, why a lot of us are traumatized. And by the way, we're traumatized, yes, because of things we perceived and saw with our parents. It's important to realize though that they were significantly more traumatized because of the way they were raised. And so nobody has been taught this because ultimately a child doesn't just need a body to be there and a caregiver to be present. What they ultimately need, and you guys check in with your own experience, don't take my word for it, is that you as a child weren't just looking for mom and dad to be there, although that's important, you were looking for a certain type of attunement for mom and dad. And if you know what I mean by that, and you feel the resonance of that, just say I in the chat box, so I know you're tracking this conversation. You are looking for them to show up in a certain way. Now, again, your parents couldn't have possibly known how to do this because certainly their parents had no attunement whatsoever. And the child rearing in the past was more around breaking the child's will, making an obedient automaton that didn't question any sort of authority whatsoever. Again, you can see that now in society and how governments are positioned and built. It's all of completely giving away our autonomy and sovereignty to an authoritative figure. Schools are built this way. Most establishments that are hierarchical in any way are built this way. You can take my word for it. You can disagree with me. This is my perception of how things are. And so we're, we have naturally have a society of giving away our power to somebody else that knows better. But at, at its core is this lack of attunement between a caregiver and, and a child. And so I know because I've learned this and I have a three and a half year old at home, it still works now, but when he was an infant, when he was a baby and he'd be stressed out, I could tell that my awareness, and we'll talk about this, was up here. We'll talk about what happened, why that happens and what, what the effect of that is. And the moment I would bring my awareness out of here and down into my body, the child would relax and fall asleep. This is energetic attunement, energetic signaling. And so when a child is upset, and it's crying and it's stressed out, if you notice they go there through their waves very quickly, hopefully. A sign of a healthy system is a child, that, a, a child that gets very upset very fast and then comes down and normalizes into homeostasis and is totally fine. A child that gets stuck in trauma for long periods of time would lend itself, again in our experience, that the child does not has not learned how to downregulate their nervous system and so energy is not fluidly moving through their body. Okay. Now, if, if, again, if you're a parent and your child is not doing this, please don't make yourself wrong because nobody has learned this. I mean, 99.99% of the living public right now does not know anything about what I'm sharing with you here. 
Also, if you're hearing this here, there's a reason that you are, there's a reason you're listening to this right now, nothing is a coincidence, okay? So you might be in a perfect place in your life to be like, okay, this is interesting. And again, if it's interesting, you wanna have a conversation with our team because that curiosity, I would trust your curiosity, okay? That's your, that's your intuition pulling you in a direction. This work is gonna alter the, the, the fundamental future of your life and the people around you if you do it. And so the reason for that is because a parent, again, an attuned parent, when they're holding the child, if you think about what's happening here, as a caregiver, I'm signaling to the child how to regulate their nervous system. In science, in science terminology, we call it down regulation, okay? Or a rest and digest state. And I want you to notice those words that science uses, rest and digest, meaning the system goes into a restful state and is digesting. What is it digesting? Energy. Energy. Say it again. Energy. You're digesting energy. And said another way, you're metabolizing energy. The body cannot metabolize energy unless it's at rest. This is why hypnosis, it's always, and relax. You're feeling more relaxed, more relaxed, right? Why are they doing that? Because as the body, as the mind goes into a more restful state, same thing with meditation, it's the purpose of meditation. Meditation is not about quieting the mind, it's about metabolizing energy. Let me say that again. It's not about quieting the mind, it's about metabolizing energy. So let's talk about what happens when you don't metabolize energy, okay? So if again, if you think about your life, think about some circumstance that you're challenged with right now, could be financial, could be relational, could be anything else that, that uh, just fucking sucks right now, okay? There's, it's not just out here, there's a resonance here, right? There's a sensation. And so energy is moving through the body and what ends up happening with energy is that wherever the quote unquote trauma was, we call trauma parts of you that are stuck in time, okay? So if you had like trauma at three years old, there's a part of you that didn't get a need met whenever that thing happened. And that part then kind of, oh, it's almost like it disintegrates, meaning like it, it comes out of the whole of the system and it becomes almost like a, an entity upon itself that views the world from a certain perspective, okay? So it's not integrated, it's unintegrated essentially, okay? And it now that part of you is stuck in time. So now you're in you know, 30, 40, 50 years old, something happens and that energy comes up and that part gets stimulated and the energy gets stuck there. It actually doesn't move through. Because if, again, I know it's moving through, if you're like a child, you get really upset for a moment and then two minutes later, you're fully regulated, right? Again, we've all seen the child get super, super upset and then boom, they're like happy and laughing. How did they do that? That is a sign of a healthy system. And I wanna point to, it's, it's not not healthy to throw a trauma, meaning it is healthy, to throw a trauma, to be angry, to be upset, to fucking have fury, and then whoop, regulate that, you know, to homeostasis and just be grounded and peaceful and happy again. That is a fluid system. It's also why I'm saying a spiritual person, a spiritual person is not a person who never fucks up or, or never messes with their integrity or never does anything that seems out of the perfection and you know craziness that happens today and all this woke culture nonsense that we're seeing all over the world. It, it's not about that at all because there are plenty of systems that cannot express anger. Like how many of you guys over there you know, listening to me right now, like, no, you're super stunted when it comes to expressing anger. Like you can't do it. And it could be for a variety of reasons. Either you disown your anger or it actually doesn't feel safe to do that. Because maybe you grew up in a house where when you when you showed anger, either you got shut down or you got beaten for it, like you got hit in some way. And so then the anger goes, it turns internal, and it actually gets angry at the system within because it has nowhere to go. And again, stuck energy, right? And so when you see, quote unquote, aggressive systems in the world, right, like I, like I have a more aggressive system, if I exude anger, but like for me, like I'm... I'm clearly very comfortable showing that anger. Now there's other things that show up for me when I do that, shame, blame, guilt, and all these kind of stuff in my system, but that's what I get to work with. So those of you guys who are saying like, I don't feel safe, right, expressing anger. So you wanna start noticing these things. And again, if you track this, you'll notice it's the same feeling in the body every single time. 
like maybe you get flush in the face, it kind of gets white, or you feel this con constriction in like your solar plexus or your stomach, it gets really, really tight. Now notice the way that we deal with that is by uh, reaching for things, usually that have us avoid our inner experience, right? This is why people overeat, this is why people drink, this is why people are addicted to drugs, this is why people have bad relationships or use sex or whatever it might be. Like all these things are defensive and avoidance tactics when we have discomfort in our body and we don't know what to do with that energy because again, we haven't been taught how to regulate our own nervous systems. You, do you think, again, here's a question for everybody. Do you guys think it would be useful to know how to regulate your own nervous system and how to work with it instead of trying to avoid what's happening? And so, and say so yes in the chat box if you agree. And so for a lot of adults, when you see these like, you know, 30, 40 somethings having midlife crises, I believe this is why. You have 30, 40 years of pent up energy that has gotten stuck over and 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 over again. And it's like, there's only so much energy you can contain within a specific container. After a while, it literally becomes too much for the system and the system goes into a full fucking panic, right? Again, you, I'm sure you all had friends that were like totally fine in their twenties and then thirties and forties started having panic attacks, right? Or, or some kind of disease show up that seemed like an anomaly and no one can understand why or overweight and can't seem to lose weight these are all ways that the system is trying to create safety and navigate itself but it doesn't work because again nothing is in the rest and digest state you're not down regulated and so this is for many of us if not all of us why we missed a huge part of the developmental uh, aspects of growing up because our parents couldn't have taught us this they didn't know how to and this stress, the stressful life kind of begins from there. And so with the waking up work, what we learn is how to put ourselves into a state of awareness and consciousness that allows for the body to regulate itself. And when the body regulates itself and you go into a rest and digest state, uh, rest and digest state, this energy that is stuck in the body begins to metabolize. Metabolize, metabolize, metabolize. When the energy metabolizes, guess what? That stressor that's living in the system isn't there. And so in the same token, the mind, which is really this like observ observation deck, so to speak, that's looking down at everything. And every time there's something that's stimulated that the mind doesn't like, the mind's like, uh oh, that's not good. Run program. I don't like that. Run program. I don't like that. Run program. And and that program is out of your control. You, you have done that hundreds of thousands of times most likely in your life and it's it's so habituated that it just it just fires unconsciously right yeah the observation deck thank you so what we want to do is we don't want to change the observation deck and that's what growing up work is so focused on it's like let's change the observation deck but it's like but that's so ingrained you've done that a hundred thousand times imagine you do anything in your life play play an instrument um jump rope like a hundred thousand repetitions you're gonna do that pretty fucking well and unconsciously. That's what people in like martial arts, right? You practice over and over again. So when that thing happens, the body just responds or military action or whatever it might be, right? Like that is what being a master is. It's like, you're not thinking, it's just happening, right? There's a stimulus, it's happening. It's stimulus, it's happening. That is how our defense systems work. And so that is very hard to rehabituate. Is it possible? Yeah, but under extraordinary amount of effort. And I know, I mean, like again, 15 years of like, doing that work every fucking day. Yes, does it make a difference? Absolutely, but again, just managing and coping better, this hasn't disappeared because it, it's still getting stuck. The energy is still getting stuck in the system. And so we what we wanna do is not learn how to manage and cope better. What we wanna learn how to do is to not have the mind, like to no longer have the stimulus in the system so the mind has nothing to respond to. Uh, just imagine that. The mind is, is the observation deck is lugging but there's nothing to respond to because when that energy hits your body, the energy moves in. <sighs> I'm regulated again. And so what I want you to leave here with today is a question is when, when, when this gets stimulated and what normally happens when it gets stimulated, it's what we would call stress, anxiety, scarcity, lack, fear, even terror. Terror is a, really normal response that people have that most people don't recognize they're living in terror and when you're living in that all the time 
how would you know? Again, how would you know if your entire life that you can remember has been lived in a fight or flight state? And so everything has been built on that. Like underneath all your belief systems and positivity is scarcity. Underneath all your beliefs and blah, 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 blah is fear. You know, and you're living your life trying to create an environment that avoids looking at and experiencing this fear or scarcity or lack in your system. And that is how most of humanity is living. That's why people get so upset at each other. That's why comment boxes online look the way that they do because anything that is not agreeable with their reality ultimately is beginning to scratch that underneath thing that their system a long time ago said, we are never going to have to feel that again. Again, sociopaths, people who don't seem to have a lot of emotional feedback, these are highly traumatized systems. And so if you poke at their reality and it begins to scratch all the defenses, what's underneath all those defenses, all those defenses come out and they're like, <clears throat> okay? We've had a, a few political figures in the last few years that I can point to that, uh, that have this phenomenon. They're not bad, but that's what, that's what that system is dealing with, okay? And so when you understand this, you start having a lot of compassion for people because you realize that ultimately what everyone is trying to deal with and what everybody is not feeling because it, it, we've condition the world this way and you look at you got to check in with your own system again don't believe me is that we have a world where people don't fundamentally feel safe they don't feel safe in their bodies they don't feel safe in this world and if you look around at what's occurring in our world you'll see this is how people act when they don't feel safe this is why the shootings are happening this is why we get crazy responses like we do with covid and 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 you know authoritarianism and all this kind of stuff that's all throughout our history, right? This is a, a lack of safety. And so safety is not an experience out here, which is how we're conditioned to believe it. It's actually an experience in here. How many of you guys can track that? Say I in the chat box. We actually have to develop safety as a felt sense within ourselves. And then guess what happens to reality? If you feel safe, your reality begins reflecting safe circumstances, okay? And so this is what we wanna to go to work on. This is what all our work on is around here. I wish we could write a headline, come here and feel more safe. People wouldn't even know what I'm talking about because we have it, most people haven't come to this level of awareness. And so I wanna to explain to you how this works, okay? So when we, when we ask people, and again, if you're, if you're tracking this, you're enjoying this conversation, you have cu curiosity, you, you are the person we're talking to. Please come talk to our team so that we can help you navigate, you know, basically how to how to do this work in a way that you can actually generate safety in your in your body, um, create more well-being as an established felt sense. And I promise you, you want to see transformation go fucking crazy in your life. It's because the frequency, the energetic output of your body is going to change reality is going to reflect as much safety and well-being as you have in your system. So if you want to see a more transformed world, stop working on them. Start working on you and realize as you develop this feeling of safety and well-being in your body, everybody around you is going to is going to reap the rewards of that. And these days we see people's relationships change very rapidly, even the most tenuous ones, because the moment you bring safety and well-being into your life, you stop reenacting trauma that you did with your parents with your spouse or your loved ones. And so they can come out of that role that they have been playing because you're no longer trying to get that need met. Like your system has been trying to get a need met. And then that with mom and dad. Oh, if they would just see me, if they would just acknowledge me, right? There's this need that you're trying to get met in your system. And just realize you may never get that need met with mom and dad. However, you can go get that need met. And then when you're around mom and dad or loved one, you know, you fill in the blank you won't be playing that role anymore. That need is already met, so that relationship just transforms. They no longer have to play that role. We put people in our lives in those roles more often than not, okay? And I know that can be triggering to hear because you're like, well, they're being abusive towards me. I'm not putting myself in that role. Yes, and they're both true. It's like you, you there's an energy that's being emitted and there's a part of you that has a d defense, like a role that it's playing and it needs to prove its worth. So subconsciously, we put ourselves in circumstances 
so that that part of us can have a role to play. That part is actually very scared. If that thing got over there, if that got healed, I don't have a role to play anymore. And I'm telling you, there's a deep concern in these internal parts that if you transform or change your life, that they will not have a role and they can't come with. And there's actually a way that we inform those parts that whatever transformation is going to occur, they're actually going to come with us. And that's what healing is. It's 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 reintegrating that part so it's aware of the whole system and it's not sitting there on an island by itself. And most people's approach to healing or transformation is, I just want to get rid of that part of me. I don't like that part of me. I'm so sorry, guys, to tell you, every part that you've ever exuded, every experience you've had, every emotion that you've had, it's all coming with you. Ain't nothing getting left behind. If, you, if you're experiencing it, that's because it's part of the system, which means you don't want to get rid of it. You actually want to get intimate with it. And that is what healing is. It's reintegrating that so it's not, it's getting its needs met. It's not feeling all alone. And so it doesn't have to act out. You know, if you take a child, again, the uh, uh, child analogies work best here. If you take a child and, and tell them to shut up and put them in a room, the child doesn't just sit there and go, okay, mom, I'll just be here quietly. They bang on the door. Bang, 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 bang. They try to get your attention. They're trying to get their needs met. And that's exactly what these parts are doing. And that's why they show up and are very disruptive because we're not we're not listening to them. We're not paying attention. So I only have a few minutes here, but here's what I want to tell you. When you tell people, when you ask people, where are they? Like, where, where are they aware from? Most people point at their heads. They point right here. They point at the space behind their eyes because it seems like the observable world is coming in through these senses and that we're somewhere sitting back here observing it. Now, that is true. That is true to the extent of that you have been conditioned most of us, if not all of us, have been conditioned to place our awareness here, okay? The reason you want to start practicing the meditation that we offer here and doing classes with us is because this is just one place where awareness can be. This is called localized awareness or conditioned awareness. And something very special happens when you train yourself to unlocalize awareness and come out into a higher state of consciousness, which can be named spacious awareness or awake awareness. And when you when you train yourself to do this, you actually begin to live outside of the conditioning of the mind. And just like in the mindset development where you can be the observer that's listening to conscious thought, you can become the observer, not just of conscious thought, but of actual energy that's moving in the body. These very subtle sensations that are happening all the time and that are truly dictating the quality of your life. When you do that, the, the, you actually train the nervous system to downregulate. Why? Because now instead of being in an object-to-object -object re, uh, relationship with your reality, you create space, again, subtle awareness between you as the object, meaning like your personality, your ego, your identity, and you as awareness that's sitting back here watching the personality and ego. And after a while, the personality is like a reality TV show. It gets fucking funny. You're like, oh my God, look at my personality go. And so instead of being uh, absorbed and merged into the melodrama of life, you can just see that there's a mechanism, a defensive, a defensive mechanism at work here that's doing what it's doing, but that's not who you are. You are the awareness that is watching. And that is all you are, all you've ever been, and all, all, all you ever will be, whether in this body or the next. It is the face you had before you had this face. It is the original awareness. It is what connects into everything and all things. It works exactly like the internet. Yes, you are a terminal. But most terminals have not connected to the internet yet. When you learn how to do this awareness practice, and this is what we call the awareness effect, you actually reconnect to the all. And you start understanding through your own experience that being one, right, as a community, a, a, a global human community of consciousness and awareness does not mean everybody agreeing or believing in the same thing. That is not what being one means. Being one is connecting to the field of energy and awareness all the time. The moment you do that, other people's opinions don't matter anymore. You're not affected. You will never comment in a social media box again. I'm sorry because I don't. I don't give a shit what anybody thinks or does or like those opinions. Like I don't play that game because I don't have these needs that are trying to be met through these comment boxes. And again, go look at it. Go read it from this, from this vantage point. It's just a bunch of needs trying to get met. 
when you actually learn how to work with your system to downregulate it and meet these needs internally, you will not do these melodramatic things out here in the life because they will literally serve no purpose to you. And so life takes on an air of ease and grace. Everything comes easier. You build a confidence that you know how you can be with anything. And again, more than anything, fundamentally building resilience in your system to feel safe and well-being, uh, emotionally fluid. These are all natural byproducts of doing this work. And the beauty is, is that it's not Elon and I doing healing or anything like that. We're navigating you towards your own divine intelligence. The same intelligence that when you cut a finger, knows how to put that finger back together just as it was. No one can dictate that. It just happens on its own. What we want to learn in, in this time in humanity is how do we use that same intelligence for healing the, the lineage trauma that humanity has been living with for thousands of years. And that trauma can really end with you because that trauma has been kept getting passed down and evolved and passed down and evolved. But when you do this work, you don't have to pass that on. So in my worldview is you get enough people doing this work, you're we're one generation away from being one, from being whole, from having safety, well-being, connection. Okay, and I'll say this, I'll, I'll start wrapping this up because we're already a minute over here. If, if this is touching your heart, your curiosity, come talk to us. So again, if you want to uh, get on the schedule and have a conversation with someone from our team, and I want you to know the people you talk to when you do these 15 minute calls, again, there's nothing to buy in these calls. These are consultation discovery calls. These are people who are doing this work every single day. So they're not just someone selling you a product or an ex like we don't sell products. We sell experiences, if anything. And these people are coming from a place of, of absolute service in their life. They are doing this work. And so you can get on the call and actually feel the resonance and the presence. Hopefully you could feel it through my system, too, of someone who's doing this work. I appreciate that you're saying like great explanation and I'm, and like here's the thing you can't explain this stuff because you read it in the book hopefully you, you're getting that i'm generating this from my my own experience because as i continue to do this work and evolve my system i am liberating myself from the from the traumatic lineage that has been passed down to me and i'm i, I come from a jewish lineage right there's there's plenty of, of, of trauma that sits with my people that uh, I was literally born in Israel uh, to uh, Russian immigrant parents that ran away from, from multi-generationals of oppression, right? So I want you to know, like, I am a living embodiment that healing is a very real thing. I, I was depressed. I was suicidal. You know, all these things. And I don't take any medicines, any pills to deal with any of those things. And once in a while, things still hit my system and cause depression in my system. My confidence comes from I know how to work my system. And so everything that triggers me also becomes an opportunity for healing. That's fucking confidence. And that's what's on. That's what's available here. So again, if you guys are interested, I would. you can certainly write contact me in the chat box, but skip that step and just go to callsatori.com. Book yourself in. Worst comes to worst, you find out this work is not for you. Uh, and, and best comes to best, you come and join us in our programs and, and we show you how far the rabbit hole goes. Okay? We love you guys very much. Always uh, very grateful for your awareness and attention, for your willingness to be here, for your willingness to be curious and open. We know that's your number one uh, most valuable asset, so we appreciate you giving it here. Uh, love you guys very, very much. We'll see you back here next Tuesday. And we look forward to uh, serving those of you that are interested. Bye, y'all. See you next week.